the food was abundant. Um, you can see the flowers that uh, are in our midst are remnants of that celebration of life. And so thank you again for being a community that cares. And continue to pray for Dirk and the boys and their extended family for Pat uh, and Jody and Susie and Bill and all of those who continue to mourn for Brenda's passing. Want to uh, remind you that we are in setting one in our hymnal. It starts on page 57 in the green hymnals, and our hymns are listed for us on our board here in front. Please join us as you are able. And then, if you want, if you have part of your day free, I think there's an opportunity for us to let the joy of the Lord pour over in a street dance a block over on Garner Villa this afternoon. And so, Let's, uh, let's look for each other and celebrate uh, what it means to be community, alive with dancing and the energy of our God today. And so I was told, I'm supposed to say, every once in a while you're just supposed to shout out, yay Jesus. So uh, if you're at the, at the street dance, let it go. Okay. Let's rise together at this time. I begin our prayer with the sign of our baptism, the sign of the cross, as we say, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When we gather, we pause at the beginning of our prayer to recognize that we sin. Not that we choose to sin or want to sin, but we sin by becoming selfish, by allowing ourselves to get distracted or to pursue other gods, to pursue idols. We pause to recognize our sinfulness before our God so that God can forgive us and call us back and renew our relationship with God and with each other. So pause, reflect on your lives right now, call to mind those places of brokenness and separation and sin and lift them up to God at this time. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin together, saying, Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. And you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience. And give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so... Let us receive that forgiveness from our God by joining our voices together in singing our opening hymn, We Praise You, O God. i 
adore you. We bless your holy name, glad praises we sing. We worship you, God of our fathers. We bless you through trial and tempest, our God, you have been. When perils overtake us, you will not forsake us. And with your help, O oh Lord, our struggles we win. With voices united, our praises we offer, and gladly our souls of thanksgiving we raise with you lord beside us your strong arm will guide us to you our great redeemer forever we praise the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us forward and salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the proclamation of the word. The first reading this morning is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
58th chapter. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loosen the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. Word of God, word of life. Together, Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Be afforded was on my tongue. Lord, you know completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. All your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Please rise for the proclamation of the gospel. The gospel today comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp 
and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning. Most of you guys know me, but for those who do not, my name is Kyleen, and I am our Children's Youth and Family Ministry Director here at St. Paul. So I wanted to kind of introduce myself for those who didn't know me, because I know I'm a new face. But um, when Pastor Rodney had asked if I would give the reflection, I was a little nervous and hesitant, but um, after gathering and getting ready for uh, this next year's 2024, our young people have an opportunity to go to the National Youth Gathering in New Orleans. And the theme for that is we are created to be. And with each of those, um, with the theme, each day has a different um, thing that um, we are created to be as Christians. And so after going through and reading um, the scriptures and stuff. Um, this one just really set with me. I prayed about it and um, just felt led that this was something that um, I needed to share from the heart. And so um, the theme that I had chosen was we are created to be authentic. We are created to be authentic, to bring our whole selves and know that we are loved by our creator. Now, Growing up, I put on here, growing up as an authentic Christian, and I put that in parentheses. Um, growing up, I did not grow up Lutheran. I actually grew up fundamental independent Baptist. And so just a different um, style kind of altogether, but obviously I was, I'm still a Christian. Um, I still have those beliefs and that faith. And so growing up for me as an authentic Christian, I had put, I went to church, um, what I thought an authentic Christian was, was going to church whenever the doors were open. My family was at church Sunday morning, two services on Sundays. We had Sunday school, and then we had the regular church service. In the afternoons, I worked on a bus route, so we would go out and um, pick up kids and then take them back. In the evenings, I was a part of our teen choir. Um, and then we were back at church on Sunday evening for um, another service. On Wednesday, we had church, and the teens were up there singing, and I was there also. On Saturdays, we went bus calling. And so that was one of the big things that I put on here as an authentic Christian, going to church whenever the doors were open and being there. Um, also, someone was dressed up and set apart appearance-wise. Now remember, this is what I'm saying, this is what I thought a good Christian was, and this is what I thought an authentic Christian was. Um, someone that dressed different, someone that was set apart difference-wise, um, someone that didn't cuss and drink, someone that cared for others and put their needs last, someone that read the Bible through in a year and could quote scriptures, someone who didn't listen to secular music. Growing up in church, I went to church from, uh, I was five years old, all the way up until my senior year in high school. I went to the Christian school. I graduated with eight students in my class, and that was in Southern California. So um, they were my friends all throughout that time. However, on Wednesdays, when we would go out to, um, it was called soul winning, uh, we would go out and we would have a certain dress code that we had to adhere to. The girls, you weren't allowed to wear pants. You had to wear dresses. You got dress checked before we went out, so you'd have to kneel on the ground if your dress didn't touch the ground, or if you're, I would fail right now. Um, <laughs> if you, you had to put the three fingers right here, and if it was any lower than that, you were not allowed to go out on behalf of the church to go and soul win. Um, they would give you another outfit to put on in order to represent the church. And... Um, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh, yeah, this is what a typical Christian is, you know? And we would go out every Wednesday. One Wednesday, I was with a group of my friends, and we were out knocking on doors, passing out flyers. 
and the group of boys that was across the street, because boys and girls didn't mix, girls were on one side, boys were on the other, um, had ding-dong ditched one of the houses. The next house, they decided, mind you, they were all suit tie, whole nine yards, dress slacks, the shoes um, waxed up and make it, you know, look in the best that they could. They were being their authentic Christian selves, um, as were we, and they flipped somebody off at the other house. I, growing up, never, ever, ever would have even thought, like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe, like, that's not what a Christian does. Like, how could a good Christian go and do that? And after going through and seeing all the things that we were doing as Christians, and then to see them do that, I was, I was mortified. I, as a teenager, could not believe that they had done that as a Christian. I mean, that's not what an authentic good Christian does. That is when I really started to doubt myself and my Christianity and my faith Later on in life, I went to college in Indiana where the women, you were able to be a teacher, a secretary, or a housewife. That's what you were able to get degrees in. The guys had a, num a number of things that they were able to do. And I had gotten really sick one year um, that I was there. And so I no longer worked um, off site. I had to work on site. Well. The college, I'm going to kind of put this in perspective because this will kind of make sense um, story-wise. The college that I went to, the girls were not allowed to go off campus. And if you went off campus, you had to have a um, senior sign you out, and then you also had to get approval from the dean of women. You weren't allowed to work off campus except for one job. It was um, called AmeriCall. It was telemarketing, and the bus took you there, the load of girls, and then the bus brought you back. You weren't allowed to take your own car or anything. However, the guys were allowed to take their own vehicles. You know, there was just a number of things. Growing up, that's just how I grew up, so I didn't think anything of it until I worked security. After getting really sick, I couldn't work off campus any, any longer, so I worked security. I was dispatched, and I was working one evening, and there was just some rustling up at the front of the college, and so we had to call our security. And sure enough, a group of the guys that had been allowed to go off campus to work, because they didn't have to get passes or anything, came back drunk as all get out. So clearly they had not been working off, you know what I mean? Like, clearly they had went off and done something else. That again, really, I mean, I had, they looked the part, they dressed the part, they went on Sundays, they had their bus routes, they did everything that a good, authentic Christian was doing. So how, how was that a good Christian? How did we have the love of Christ? How were we any different on Sunday mornings, we would go out and um, pick up kids from Chicago on the bus routes. And many of these kids, their parents, this was the only way that they got fed, was by sending them to the buses and by sending them to us. A lot of them, I walked alongside a few young people who their relatives had just gotten shot in the streets the night before. They didn't look like Christians, they didn't look the authentic part, you know, with my upbringing and stuff. Like, how were these men at the college any different than any of these other kids and young people that I was picking up on the bus route? Yeah, they said they were sharing their light and they were showing the light because they looked the part. They were there on Sunday mornings, they were there on Sunday nights, they were out there bus calling but how were we any different? That really started to eat at me, and that really tested and made me question my faith and my Christianity as a Christian. That really made me wonder, like, why am I serving this God? Who is this God that I'm serving that he would allow all these things to happen? But then I thought, all that I was really doing was I had this unrealistic image this image that God expected of me, what I thought God expected of me, 
How was I supposed to be an authentic Christian? And then I delivered my son, Malachi, stillbirth. And my Christianity again, that light, I didn't feel that light of God. I didn't feel like I could be a light to anybody. And then my church that I grew up in, my community, my family, those people that were dress checking for me, and so I thought Christian wise, they were there for me. Um, they wouldn't have the service at our church for my son because I hadn't been going to that church for a couple of years. And that really broke me. Um, tried and tested that light. I did not feel that light of God in any way, shape, or form. But one of my fellow classmates, Brian Pattison, um, had recently become a pastor two years prior. And he heard of the passing of our son and reached out. And mind you, I hadn't gone to his church. I hadn't tithed. I hadn't done anything. I was not a member of his church. I was no longer, I, I mean, nothing besides acquaintance, you know? I mean, I graduated with him. And he reached out and had our service for Malachi, did a program for him, went through and walked alongside me and um, my husband Curtis and our family, invited us and welcomed, welcomed us into their church with open arms. And that was just what I needed to be rekindled. Um, when I was younger, obviously I, I thought like, eh, <clears throat> that light of God, you know, like I lost it. Like I wasn't doing all these things because this is what I thought. Typical Christian, you had to do all these things in order to be able to share that light and show that light. But what I didn't realize was that light is always inside of each one of us. And it took Pastor Brian sharing that light with someone who I, I didn't feel like an authentic Christian anymore. I hadn't been going to church. I had, you know, gone out. I had listened to secular music. I could not quote scripture <laughs> at the time. I've never been the greatest about that. But there were so many things that I was not doing as an authentic Christian that I wondered why. But then Brian showed me that light. He showed me that there was more to an authentic Christian than looking the part than going and just checking off the boxes of Christianity. That light is always inside of us, and God shows us that light, and to, in order for us to, sometimes we need somebody to remind us of that. Sometimes we need church, sometimes we need somebody in the community in order to see that that is the light that we hold as Christians inside of us, to be able to be the light for other people. Many of us have an image that we think of God. Do you think God <clears throat> is an angry banner God just waiting to turn into Hulk and crush you? You're likely working hard to tiptoe around him and appease his anger. In your mind, is God a cosmic scorekeeper? You probably assume you'll never measure up hoping that in the end your good choices and deeds will outweigh your bad ones. Is God an impersonable, invisible force inside everything and possibly every person? And through him, we become one with the universe? Then you're probably seeking a formula, technique, or a method to develop oneness with the cosmos. Is God a loving father to you, one who wants to know you personally so he can love, direct, and guide you and give you the very best? If so, then you're probably experiencing peace and contentment in your faith. Is God a friend to you, 
one you can call on through the good, the bad, and in between. The first person you call upon when you are having a rough time, needing someone to listen, needing someone who understands. To be an authentic Christian, we must look to Jesus' examples in order to let him shine through us. Sitting by those we may not know, being engaged in our community, being engaged in our children's youth and family lives, building relationships through community involvement, walking alongside our brothers and sisters who may not believe like we do. Be the light to those whose light is dimmed. Be the light of Christ to those who cannot be the light themselves right now. Sure, you can be your authentic self and not lose that light of Christ that's within us. But wouldn't you rather be an authentic Christian and allow God's light to shine through you. Thank you, Kylene, for your words. Let us let our light shine by expressing our common faith together through the Apostles' Creed as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are called by Christ to be light for the world by lifting each other up in prayer. I invite you to think about your lives, those people, those situations that you would like to lift up to God today for grace. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of light and life, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our song to theirs that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy. All the leaders of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators, mayors, and city councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Though we walk amid troubles, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved in trouble or adversity or sick and in need of care. Be especially present to the people of Hawaii and Southern California. Lord, in your mercy. You call us into this community of St. Paul in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Give us wisdom as we prepare for the upcoming program year. Help us to teach, witness, grow in safety and hope. Lord, in your mercy. You are the everlasting love from which we are born, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of her beloved dead, especially Brenda Downing and Bob Goodyear. Bring us with them to your heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you very much. Take a minute to share with those around you a sign of Christ's peace.
us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. So great was your love that you gave us your Son as our Redeemer. You sent him as one like us, though free from sin, that you might see and love in us what you see and love in Christ. Your gift of grace, lost by disobedience, is now restored by the obedience of your Son. With gratitude, We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints in their song of joy. So we remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was at a meal with his disciples. During that meal, he took bread into his hands. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is broken and given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper had ended, he took a cup filled with wine, gave thanks to his heavenly Father, and then gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of the new covenant, formed in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. When you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. And so we continue to remember our Lord by praying together the words that He taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the risen Christ invites us to this table where many become one, where our light is renewed, and we are invited to share it with each other. Come eat and drink and be filled.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I invite you to rise. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare. The body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, loved just as we are, into your vineyard to care for all the brokenhearted, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. God the Creator. Jesus the Christ and Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in their heart of eternal love. Amen. Let us sing together.
And so we say together, through the power of Holy Spirit, we go into the world to creatively connect, intentionally grow, and joyfully serve. Thanks be to God.